Hi, artists. Our next lesson is called What on Earth? Earth Day Art. And the reason that I'm creating this lesson for you um, in April is because April 22nd is Earth Day. So that's a day when we go out and we celebrate the beauty of our Earth. Um, the theme for this year's Earth Day is um, climate change and ways that we can help to slow climate change and make people aware of things that they can do to help um, improve our environment. So it also happens to be the 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day, which was held all the way back in 1970. So our inspiration for this lesson is a British artist. His name is Andy Goldsworthy. He's still alive today. He is a sculptor, a photographer, an environmentalist, and an environmental artist. So Andy Goldsworthy uses natural materials to create large scale sculptures and smaller scale sculptures. Here you see an example of his woven branch circular arch. This is located out in nature on a walking path and it is something that you can actually walk through and experience it so you can see it from all sides and all angles. Here's an example of his snow sculpture. So I'm showing you this so you can see that sometimes he is uh, manipulating or changing the natural material shape. He's doing that because he is an artist and he's interacting with those materials and changing the way they look. This is Andy Goldsworthy's roof sculpture, which is actually just downtown at the National Gallery of Art. And the cool thing about that sculpture, when you walk into the gallery, you'll see that some of it seems to be on the inside of the building. And then some of it seems to be on the outside of the building. So what do you think? Is there a big hole cut in that glass for that sculpture to fit through? Or is there some other way that they've made this sculpture look that way? Here is Red Cherry Leaf Patch. This is one of Andy Goldsworthy's smaller scale projects. And here is Bracken, where he has collected a number of different fern leaves and created something that looks almost snake-like. Your art making challenge is to take a field trip. So take a parent with you or let your parents know where you're going. You're going to take a trip outside your house into nature. You might want to take a plastic bag so that you can collect materials for your sculpture. And um, I would say that you might want to consider leaving your sculpture in a shared neighborhood space. That way everyone that's walking by it can enjoy it. Here's your art making pro tip for the day. So Andy Goldsworthy used multiples of the objects that are in his sculpture. So he didn't just collect one rock. He might collect 10 or 20 rocks and they might be all relatively the same size or the same shape. So as you're collecting materials, consider collecting multiples of each. This allows you to create a sense of rhythm and repetition in your artwork. Here I'm showing you Van Gogh's famous painting called Starry Night. Great example of an artist using repetition of shapes and colors and strokes of paint to create rhythm in his artwork. Take a minute to reflect when you're finished doing this project. Was there a moment when you noticed something that you'd never seen before? Sometimes we call that a, a wow moment or an aha moment. And my second reflection question is in Andy, Goldsworth art, Andy Goldsworthy's artwork, what do you think the hand of the artist or the way the artist is moving things around or nature itself? If you have a moment, take a picture of yourself creating your artwork out in nature, your environmental art, and post it on Twitter at Tara Center Art or send Miss B a photo via email. Have fun, everybody, making your environmental art. And I hope that you take a moment on April 22nd to celebrate Earth Day.